What's up, everyone? I think I figured out one of the reasons people stop praying. And because, I mean, I've just been through this weird thing. I'll tell you about it. It's, uh, I think why people might stop praying sometimes is when you pray, I don't think it's so much you're not getting what you're wishing for. It's that when you start talking to God, he starts telling you some, some hard truths. And sometimes he tells you to do things you just don't want to do. So you just stop talking to him. You know what I'm saying? So like, something really cool happened recently and it has to do with Simply Sober. So I don't mind writing. I like writing. I don't mind talking into a mic. I don't even really mind doing these anymore, although they used to make me a little nervous. Um, but I was praying hard, and this was, gosh, about a couple months ago. And I'm like, I need some direction, dude. Like, what am I... Because I do this, and I do handyman work, and I do a whole bunch of family stuff, and I'm just, I'm kind of all over the place, so it's easy for me to get a little ungrounded, and I'm just praying. I'm just talking to my father, and just, hey, you know, I feel like my energy is going everywhere. What am I supposed to focus on, and all that stuff? And I made videos about this in the past. And he basically said, keep doing what you're doing, but he said, you need to public speak, pretty much. And I'm like, really? Like, this is 2024, like, who, who even does that anymore? Of course, I shouldn't say that, because I watch all these videos of public speakers, but, like, I can't just do some online, st <laughs> online stuff all safe behind my computer. God ain't safe, he's a wild, wild cat. He'll have you doing some crazy stuff. And, um, and then when you're starting something up like that, especially what I'm doing, I mean, I'm, my, my whole thing is basically saying that like, like counselors and professionals, these big smart people that get paid to do this kind of stuff and have all these opinions, haven't been trained in addiction at all. Like not that the information isn't out there, I get it off of these alphabet websites and these other, but you have to dig and you have to connect dots. They don't teach it to the people handling the actual addicts. And something really crazy just came about. So I was kind of putting it off. I'm like, how do I even get into this? Oops, hold on a second. Sorry about that. The motion sensor light went off. Now you get to see my white hair. Um, yeah, I'm like, how do I even, how do you even get into that? What's my, Pitch, where do I go talk? People are like, go talk at meetings. I'm like, I don't know if you've been to meetings, but they don't, it's not that you can't, but they don't really dig you not talking about AA stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm like all over the place. I'm talking about all sorts of health and wellness and trying to connect it all because I've done it before. I've tested the waters a little bit and I've even watched people try to like bring health realization into like a 12 step and people are kind of like, okay, you know, like whatever. And um, it just doesn't seem like when you're in a, a support group meeting of a certain style, um, it's real easy to offend people, let's just put it that way. Like if you were to say like something about like meds or something, but anyways, I'm like, what do I, I have no idea what I'm doing. And, and, and even in my months ago long talk with God, he's like, don't think about it. And that was, I'm like, wait, do you know who you're talking to? I'm like, don't think about it. That's, that's all I do. I overthink everything. That's how I figure all this, my life, everything I do out, just constantly thinking. He's like, no, don't think about it. Just start doing stuff. And, and then I'm like, what did I say to him? I said it in another video, but I was like, 
I kept on checking in, are you sure? And he goes, if you don't trust me, then don't even bother. And I was like, dang. So he'll tell you stuff that you don't even want to hear. And he'll ask you to do stuff you don't want to do. So be careful if you're asking him for his will, which his primary will is for you to pray and have a relationship with him. But when you're asking for guidance and he tells you, go do this. Like think about back in biblical days. You think these people wanted to go trek 800 miles to this city and go start preaching to a bunch of people that hate them or whatever the scenario was? Like, does that sound fun? No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's craziness, but um, something really cool happened with this. So just one random day, I got the thought in my head, like just make these really basic kindergarten level, like just kind of flashcards, pages. And just laminate them so you can draw on them if you want or whatever. And just make those for just one of your little segments like cravings. Like I can spit that out, whatever, that um, addicts aren't addicted or craving. Addicts don't crave their drug of choice. Um, that kind of stuff. And like, so I just quick did it, right? It, it, and even doing something like that kind of takes a little time. Got to go get a little laminator, find one, 17 bucks, whatever. So I did that. Now, I'm, now, this is just like on the cuff. Like, this isn't planning anything out. I don't know if I needed to get to the point where I just started doing stuff without trying to overthink it or what. And then it's like, all right, now go find a place to speak at. Like, teachers at a college or uh, a treatment center or something. Like, nothing was inkling me towards a sobriety group. So I first went to this college that does a bachelor's in um, addiction counseling. And I go into the school, and I don't know if it was just, like, um, bad timing. It's the end of the semester. The place just did not give me a good vibe at all. It felt like a... It was, like, shaped... The building was, like shaped and designed it felt like a prison like there was like a punch code on the restrooms I'm like what the like this is obviously going to be some government building in two years like they just did a hustle um and i found the office for the psych teachers and i knocked and they're like in some meeting or something they didn't even bother answering. i'm like i'm out of here and i didn't give up then i just for the day i did <clears throat> And I'm like, all right, even if I do get in the door at one of these places, what do I even say? Like, how do I present what I am about to these people who do this for a living? Like, how, what's the word for it? Pompous is that. Like, how do I even get in the door? Like, what do I say to them? I want to tell you some stuff you don't know. And so this is just really weird how it all worked out. So the next day, I was like, what are you going to do today? I'm like, I got this job, and I got to do this. And I'm like, and I got to go talk to a counselor. And she's like, where? I'm like, right, down the road. Like, I couldn't tell her I had no plan, really. And I just look at my phone, and I type in addiction treatment, and then there's just one, like, five minutes away. Like, I'll go to that one. I'm still like, what am I going to tell these people when I walk in the door? I'm like, how about like, I'm doing some research for my website. And here was my plan. And this, the plan that I came up with on the way to this place that I've never been to before. Don't you, I still to this point don't even know what their program is. If it's 12 step or Christ based or smart or health realization, I have no clue. I still don't know. It didn't really say, it said holistic on the website, but that doesn't mean anything in the medical field. Um, and so I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll say, I'm doing some research for my website, which wasn't a total lie, but it was a little deceitful. And then my plan is basically to sit down with a counselor and ask them, if I'm an addict, and I'm coming to you for help. 
and I say, I get a lot of cravings. I don't know how to deal with them. Can you tell me what they are, where they come from, and how to get rid of them? And just stopped. And it was obviously to prove a point. And then hopefully at some point in the conversation, segue my information in there because I can rattle it off to where it makes sense. And so that's what I did. I went to this treatment center and I'm explaining it this way to show you like how like I didn't plan this out. This is just all coming to me. And that was what I was told to do before. And I was just waiting, waiting, waiting. And even the motivation to do this came out of nowhere. Cause my motivation is I'll do one-on-ones all day. I'll, like I said, talk behind the mic all day. I'll write all day. I'll publish, I'll do whatever, uh, interviews. I don't get interviews, but if I had a lot of interviews, I do those all day too. But speaking in front of a group of people, that's, not my bag. I'm not horrible at it, but I hate the feeling. I get that, like, that, the nerves. I get panic, like, for the day before, like, just all messed up. I hate that feeling. And, um, it's fear. <laughs> and so, anyways, I go to this treatment thing, and I go through the front door, and, like, they're all in this big meeting. And the, um secretary or front desk lady or whatever kind of had the door crack she kind of comes out she's like what you need and i'm like i want to pick the brain of one of your counselors i have a website and simply sober simply dash sober.com and uh i was just wondering if i could pick the brain of one of your peeps and she's like their lunch is we're in a big meeting right now the like with all the counselors and the director and and uh, all the patients like a support group meeting or whatever. Um, like She's like, we have our big one on Friday, so everybody's in here. She goes, come back at 11.45, and they're on lunch. I'm like, just come back? Like, you don't want to, like, take my number or anything? She's like, no, just come on back at... So I come back. They're just getting out of their treatment session. Or their... Sorry. It's late, man, and I've been s s fighting a cold all week and all this stuff, but... So they come out, they're all bum rushing out of the room, you know, when group is over. And the first lady that comes up to me is like, hey, what's up, dude? Because <laughs> she doesn't recognize me. And I said, yeah, um, I'm the guy who wants to talk to one of the counselors. She's like, all right, come on over to my office. And now it's pure chaos. There's like 30 people in there. And now everybody's running around, like walking around, getting their phones out of the little phone stash spot because you can't have them in there. And, and everybody needs to talk to her and they're like in a line and she's like come in and i'm like don't you want you can t i don't i'm not in a hurry you can take care of these people she's like no get in here and i'm like what's going on here like usually this random dude wouldn't be priority right and i was surprised they even wanted to talk to me but anyways I sit down and there's still some people popping in and there's another person in this big office and we're just sitting in a chair in the middle of this like disorganized room and uh, I'm not uncomfortable with it because I'm super non-professional anyways but uh, it was it was chaos I'm like all right no well, let's do it in chaos then whatever so we finally get a minute <laughs> and I ask her the question and um, and the first thing out of, her, out of her mouth was like, oh. And I'm like, I already, it's already working. Because it's not an easy question, especially when you're, and, and everybody has to recognize what I'm doing and teaching is different than treatment. I'm trying to supplement treatment. Now you would assume learning about addiction and what I'm talking about would be a big part of it, but it's not. It's just not. They have plenty of other things to do. And when they're at that stage, a lot of it doesn't stick anyways, or at least they, they, they think it doesn't stick. It seems to go in one ear and out the other. And they have all these other protocols and criteria that they need to cover, and they were never taught it, so they never think about teaching it to anybody. Kind of like doctors and stuff. When doctors go to school, they're just taught 
the industry. If they want to learn any extracurricular stuff, that's on them. But the stuff they got to go through just to be a doctor, and then when they are a doctor, I don't know how you would have time to study anything else. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, and this lady was totally cool, though, and she was, like, so close to to actually matching, we'll call it my theory, um, about cravings. She is talking about the reward center. People don't talk about that anymore. She was saying stuff like the, the science has now recently found out, and I'm kind of like, eh, they've kind of known this for, like, 30 years, but whatever. Um, maybe she just recently found out, or who knows, and they're always publishing articles but she was, she was getting so close to it. And I was like telling her, I'm like, that's just such a breath of fresh air to like even hear as far as she got. And um, she was struggling with the how do you get rid of it part though. Um, and then she was getting into the, the prefrontal cortex and then it was getting a little hey. Eh. But she, she <laughs> and I was, I was saying like, that's such a breath of fresh air. She goes, why does it feel like I'm being tested? And I was like, because you are. And she's like, what are you doing here? Do you want to speak or something? And I'm like, yes, I do. She goes, all right, let's do it. Um, and I'm like, well, let me show you my little spiel quick. And I had my little flashcards. And I was just bam, 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 bam. She's like, that's it's perfect. Because I broke down basically the neurology of cravings into like a grade schooler could understand it. And we got to just talking and talking. She was so cool. Um, and then I went about my way. I was like, put down the times and the days that I can come speak, whatever. So now shit's getting real. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even know how I got that far. So now I'm gonna be speaking Excuse me. I know I got to quit this shit. Um, I'm going to be speaking, and I already spoke last Friday or whatever, but in this story, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to be speaking. So like, now I'm like, well, what exactly am I going to talk about? Because I can do the cravings thing in like 10 minutes, you know? And uh, I figured I'd do the piece on, since I'm with people in early recovery, I was going to do the piece on the relationship that we have with the drug, the cucking episode. I don't know if you've seen that one. Um, basically, why you don't socialize at places where you'll see your ex-lover, which is your drug. And, um, and a good way to get over it, you know what I mean? And, um, but this is a piece is pretty long and I word things in such a way that I, I word things that I wanted to warm into your head and it's hard to memorize that style. It can't be just straight textbook section one. This is what I'm going to talk about. This is the introduction. This is the body. This is the conclusion. No, I just go for it. And so... I'm rehearsing and rehearsing and getting more nervous and more nervous and then it's finally the day. And uh, I do the cravings part, no problem. I, I had, I even got like, I had this little pro projector and I had the pictures to put up on the wall with the brain and everything. And I get into this room and a couple of people are saying hi, like I'm, the, like I'm a new patient and stuff. I'm like, no, I'm on the other side now. I'm just gonna share some stuff. And, um, but there was nowhere to put the projector. There was no, the whiteboard, there's a bunch of chairs in front of it. And I'm like, all right, it's just a big circle with like 20 people or so. And um, then, then, oh, and by the way, I didn't even mention this. I found out at the end of our conversation in her office that she's the director of the whole place. I'm like, oh, well, nice. So anyways, I do my thing. And uh, so I, I cruise through the craving stuff. <clears throat> and then there's a juxtaposition before I started the other half of it. And then she had the, everybody asked me questions and stuff. It turned into a kind of an interview thing and it was pretty cool. 
people who are actually listening. People are actually registering it. People, there was one guy who got offended because there was a part where I say this is why it seems like support groups don't work. Um, but he heard it as that they don't work. And I'm like, no, they work. They just work for something else. And they can seem like they don't work because you're still going home and craving a year later. And if you're still doing that, some people think that it's not working because they still feel that way. And clearing stuff up that people, you know, and it was really cool. And then I get into the, to the um, next part of it, the relationship with your drug part. And uh, this, that part, and I, like I said, I still didn't know what their sobriety program was. But that part goes into God and Jesus. And I don't Bible thump, but I'm just saying replace the relationship. So I keep it really light. And I do say, like, for lack of a better term, we're going to say God, pretty much. For lack of a better term, Satan, sin. These are just big descriptions. Um... To not, you know, you got to put those little disclaimers in there. You don't even know your audience. And um, it was, while I was doing it, and this part I had to read because I didn't commit it to memory, but while I was doing it, I was hearing preach. And I'm like, what the? And I, I got through it. We did some more questions and stuff. And then the group kind of started doing their group thing. And, at, and after about 10, 15 minutes, I had to get to work anyways. So I get up, I'm like, I gotta go to work, sorry, and grab my bag and my cup, and uh, as I'm leaving, I just get an applause, and I don't know if that was just, they had to do it, or it felt good, that's all I gotta say, it felt like it went good. And, but f my point here is, not that it went good and I rocked it or anything like that, but the things that needed to line up for that to happen, like I couldn't have planned it. I couldn't have planned it any better. This was all on the fly, just like, just do it. Just like I was told to do. I guess I just had to be ready. And, um, and I'm putting stuff off for this. Like, I'm, like, I'm not focusing on anything but this till this is done, because this can lead into other things. Maybe speaking there more, or maybe she tells me to go speak somewhere else, or who knows what, what could happen. And they, they were so cool. The whole group was even so cool. I've been to groups where, like, if someone came in and talked like that, there would have been no reciprocation, no response. It would have been like, bleh, like I'm still on my Percocets and, and uh, whatever medications they're on. You know what I mean? Like they don't care at all. And, uh, but they were very receptive and, um, and even had quite, to the point they had questions and, and it, they seemed genuinely interested in stuff. And, the, and me and stuff. So that was just a really cool experience. And um, I, I kind of popped my cherry. I haven't public spoke since college, like, whatever, 20 years ago. And that was for a class. So, but I'm just still in awe. Because I'm like, whether that goes anywhere or not, for that to even have happened. Because, like I said, you can't just walk in anywhere and do... It doesn't just work like that usually. And I wasn't trying to prophesy that it wasn't going to work, just in my experience. I mean, do, does it not seem odd to you guys that just some random dude walks into some random treatment and it all just spreads out nice like hot melted butter? Like, does that happen? You know what I'm saying? But I mean, yeah, I was super nervous. And, I, and like I said in the beginning of this video, because this is what I just experienced, like I was given a mission and I didn't like it. I wanted to stay in my little comfort zone. And that's not how you do it. I just, I just started reading this book and it's called um, Your God is Too Safe. And I just, I guess, I, to wrap this up, I want to explain something that he wrote that hit me super hard. And he was talking about basically how God is wild. And it's, he's a complete mystery. And the way life works, even besides this just last week, just if I look back at my life, what a weird whirlwind. 
And how I ended up where I am now is just utterly amazing. There's no other way to describe it. And, um, and all the ups and downs and surprises and what the fucks and like, well, how did that solve itself? And how did I meet that person? And all these weird little coincidences. And you can say, oh, it's a small world, but Anyways, this author is talking about something that hit me super hard, and I think that it's actually helped, and that's, this is another coincidence, too, that I even grabbed this book out of the hundreds on the shelf, because it happens to be describing kind of where I felt and where I feel like I'm going, and he's talking about, he illustrated Christianity and growing in faith can be a lot like, when you leave one country, you go through their border, patrol people, and in a lot of countries, before you get to the next country's border control, there's two. In between, there's a big stretch of land and it's called borderland, where neither of the country's laws apply. So as a Christian, when you're leaving the worldly part and you're heading towards the kingdom, a lot of times you get stuck in that in-between because that's where God is still safe. You can say you're, you're detached from the worldly stuff and that you're still talking with God and all this stuff, but you haven't quite crossed to the next border to where you're with God and you're just reliant on Him. In the borderland, there's no rules, and you can kind of be with them and kind of not be with them. You know what I mean? And I think that's where I was, and I think I'm getting pushed across the border. And <clears throat> I guess I'm realizing, yeah, God is wild. He's not safe. Even when you look back at your life, I am in a beautiful setup with a beautiful family right now. But the craziness along the way to get here just pure craziness but i wouldn't be here in this situation if it wasn't for all that craziness that's crazy right anyways that's all i got y'all you have a good one check this off